In this video, we will talk about how to properly use the TRS-100 needle sensor to prevent any damage to it. This is a TRS-100 needle sensor. It is 100 mm long and only 2 mm in diameter. There are precisional sensors buried in the needle tube, so the wall is really thin and they need to be very careful of using it in case it got damaged. Now we have an easy case of using the TRS-100 sensor. This is fire sand. It's low in moisture, it doesn't have any pebble or rock in it, so the needle can go in and out pretty easily. We rem remove the cap and take the needle. Always hand the needle by the metal handle Never put the cable and uh, try not to touch the needle tube. We dip the needle in to the fire sand straight and slowly. Never go too fast in case there is a rock or something stopping the needle. Okay, we push the needle all the way in. It's sitting there properly. Now we try to pull it out. Again, very straight and slowly. Since some sample like concrete, rubber, or silicon would create some suction force, if we do it too fast or too hard, it will also risk to break the needle. Okay, the needle is out. We put the cap back. Now, we have some real earth sample here. It has soil and some uh, small pebble and rocks. So it make it harder for the TRS-100 needle sensor to go through in there. Now we give it a try. We push it gently and slowly in it. And halfway through, uh, something is stopping it. We don't, push, we don't push hard this time. We just pull it out and set it set. We will need something called a poker kit, usually included with uh, the TRS uh, instrument kit. This real bit, a L shaped poker rod, and uh, some needle sleeves. We will use the L shaped poker rod first. We dip that pushing rod in the earth to make a hole for the TRS 100. If there's any rock or something in the way, this rod can drive it aside a little bit. Okay, now we have the hole. We wipe it clean a little bit. And now we take the TRS-100 needle and try this hole. Gently, okay. It goes in without problem this time, but uh, it not always doing that all the time. Sometimes the dirt or some uh, small rock would still go back to the hole and uh, the TRS-100 needle still a little bit hard to push in there. So we take the needle out gently, wipe it clean a little bit. We don't force it through in the when they still have problem in case it got bent or break. And in that case, we will need this needle sleeve. It's in the same bundle. This needle sleeve is just the right size to put the TRS-100 needle tube in there. And now we take a L poker rod, insert in the needle sleeve, and we push it into the earth. This one doesn't have any sensor in there, so we can push it pretty hard. Yeah. Okay, it's pushed all the way in, just leave a little bit so uh, the dirt and the other stuff doesn't go in the needle sleeve. And uh, we should push as much as we can, because uh, if uh, there's not so much deep in there, part of the needle would be measuring air, which gives a lower result. Okay. When we need to insert the TRS-100 needle into the sleeve, we should add some thermal paste 
to make a good thermal contact or else there will be a air gap between the needle and the sleeve and uh, it would give a lower test result too. This is a box of uh, 120 silicon thermal compound or we can call it a thermal paste. Usually we include it in our instrument kit but uh, not with uh, the needle itself. If uh, anybody need more, we also distribute this paste alone. We put on glove and uh, take some thermal paste. Grab the needle by the handle and uh, apply gently along the needle tube. Make sure it's uh, covered the needle tube completely and smoothly. leaving no shining metal part. Now we try to insert the TRS-100 into the needle sleeve. Make sure it's straight and also gently and slowly so the excessive thermal paste got pushed out, not stuck the needle and we gently twist it a little bit about 90 degrees to spread the thermal paste evenly. Okay, this uh, earth is a little loose so we need to hold the sleeve in and push, pulling it out, pulling the TRS out to make sure the needle is still covered with paste entirely. Yeah, a part of uh, the needle tube it, got uh, the thermal paste scratch off. We can see this uh, shining part. We cover some uh, thermal paste back. And now we dip it in again. Just gently and slowly make, it, make sure it's straight and give a little twist at the bottom and we take it out again to see if it's still entirely covered with thermal paste. I recommend to repeat this process for a few times so the, all the space inside is filled up with the thermal paste so we, got, we can get good test result. We push it in again, give it a little twist. We put it out. This time it's entirely covered with thermal paste. There's uh, no shiny part again. So we put it back in and we can run tests like this. After the test, we would gently pull this needle out. It should be pretty easy pulling out from sleeve unless we leave it in there for too long and the paste dries. We wipe this uh, needle body clean. Never leave too much paste in this because over time the paste will dry and it will become quite hard to clean it. And if it like wipe it too hard, it's also risk to bend the needle and break the sensor inside. Okay, the needle is cleaned and we also need to take this uh, sleeve out and uh, clean it inside out. So we grab this alcohol, open it and uh, grab a piece of pipe cleaner like this and we dip it into the alcohol. Now we grab this needle sleeve push this pipe cleaner into the needle sleeve. Push it in and out while twisting the needle sleeve a little bit to get all the thermal paste out. Now we wipe it dry. This needle sleeve is pretty clean now. We're ready for use again. Another way of measuring solid earth sample is using TRS-50 rock needles. 
This is a TRS-50 rock needle. It is 50 millimeters long and is 4 millimeters in diameter. So it is much thicker and stronger. It follows another standard but is as accurate and effective. We can easily just push it in the earth. Okay, it's go in pretty easily and it go all the way in. After test, we can pull it out easily and clean it. There are some other cases we need to use the TRS needle sleeves, like some condensable samples, like concrete, cement, and some resin samples and stuff. We can insert that the needle sleeve before it's condensed. And after it's condensed, the sleeve would stay, stay solid in there and make a pretty good contact with uh, the sample. And we can stick the needle in and make measurement. And in that case, we need to bury the needle tube in as much as we can, but leave just a little bit in case something else goes in there to stop the needle. But the same, we need to make sure it's not too much leave all the samples, so we are not measuring too much air. And also some samples are hard to drill with, like a concrete, it doesn't have a smooth whole wall of surface and uh, rubbers and the silicon kind of stuff after the drill it still would create a, a lot of suction force so it's really hard to push the needle in and pull it out there's a lot of force in there so we are risking to bend the needle and using needle sleeve would be good practice to protect the needle in this kind of samples. We already have this uh, sleeves bearing the concrete, so we would uh, do the same thing as we've done when uh, we are trying to use uh, sleeves in the earth sample. We apply that thermal paste first. Make sure the needle tube is uh, covered smoothly and completely with a thermal paste. This time, because the needle sleeve is already solid in that uh, condensed uh, concrete, so it doesn't move. We don't need to uh, hold the needle sleeve with another hand anymore. Just make sure the needle goes in straight and gently. Yeah, we twist a little bit and pull it out, see uh, if there's a uh, exposed needle tube part. Yeah, cover the shiny parts again, make sure that all the space in the needle sleeve is filled up with thermal paste. Slowly, in case there's any dry paste left in there, and give a little twist. Also, we can twist when we are pushing it in and out. Okay, this time it's already much better. Barely see any part is exposed. So we add a little bit thermal paste again, and we will stick it in. Gently. Yeah. And give it a little motion. Don't twist it so much so the cable wouldn't get caught in anything. Okay. We try it for the last time. It's almost covered entirely this time.
Okay, we go in straight again. Give a little twist and in and out motion. Got a, the pace uh, evenly spread it. Now it's sitting there pretty well. We can put the measurement. After the measurement, we slowly pull the needle out. It doesn't bend the needle. And after that, we need to grab some paper towel and try to clean the needle like we did before. Hold uh, the metal handle with one hand and clean it with the other hand. If needed, we can also get a little alcohol and uh, try to clean it like um, completely. Hold it tight again and gently wipe it clean. Now we try to clean this needle sleeve in the concrete sample. Just simply grab this uh, pipe cleaner, dip it in the alcohol, and dip it in the needle sleeve. Do in and out, twist a little bit for a few times, and it will be clean enough. Now we wipe everything dry, remove all the remaining alcohol so they don't go into the sample.